Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan. We have the magic of the midnight moon today. Yes, 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 lots of midnight moon talk, but really what I'm going to do is show you some things about the thought process I have for some of the blocks, and I will do the inset seam. So I did a little video, walked you through how to do an inset seam, and they're not scary, they're not hard. They might just be fiddly at one spot, but just one spot, so that's not bad at all. And I'm gonna show you that. Okay, I've got them up on the wall, all but what I finished from last week. And I did, I have them all done. So here is the Patchwork Big O. And I did from this one, uh, the biggest size, I took the cutoffs and I made a little bonus block. So I'll probably put that in with my whole basket I have up here of bonus blocks. Then the other one here was called the Maple Star. I think this is beautiful. And then last week's was the bonus pumpkin, so I have the pumpkin. But I think these maple stars are just really, really pretty. Now I will put those up on the wall here and then we can see how they look so that I have everything all up there. Now I didn't uh, skip a block yet to, to put the pumpkin in, but I will. There is one of the blocks coming up <clears throat> that I'm like, okay, I'll just do two. I won't do the large size and this will go in there. So we will just put that down below. And as you can see, I have the bat up there. And several of you pointed out that there are some other darker based blocks. So I think that the bat will stay as is because this is a lot of work. <laughs> I don't really want to remake anything. So, ah, uh, there we go. Look at that. Now I will, let me just do a straight on picture. So hold on, take a look at this. Here they are all up on the wall and I went ahead and this is the Southern Star, the one Southern Star that I have done and I stuck that up there. So these are all the blocks. Oh, they look so fantastic. Isn't that fun? So fun to see them together in size, large, medium, and small. This coming week now, we have two new blocks, which are the checkerboard and the Southern Star. But first, let me show you the inset seam for the patchwork big O. And I actually did the inset seam on the smallest one, the tiny, the tiniest block. And this is what the demo's on. So let's watch. In order to do the inset seam, I am going to use the Frixon pen and make a mark at the fourth inch. So you can see the fourth inch, and I just want to make a little dot so that I know where I'm going when I'm going to sew this on. And I will be sewing from the bottom up until that dot, and then there's one other inset seam at the very end. It's pretty easy. Let's go. Well, let's do that again. I need it on the back of the fabric, not the front. There we go. You can see my dot, and I will be, let's, I can start at the dot and go all the way to the end. And this will be my first seam with this a partial up there. For this seam, because I really need to see that dot, I have the open toe foot on. And I am going to, I think I'm right about there. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now I can backstitch one or two. Can't do that one handed. I'll backstitch to the dot and then also down to the end. Let me see if I can do it. There we go. Backstitch. Okay, perfect. I'll go ahead and sew that seam. All the way to the end. It's a little funky there, but it's good. It is good. And I am going to show you what that looks like. There we go. So now that's flipped open and I have this part. See here? Because when we go around to the very to the very fourth to the fourth one of these, I'll need this part to sew on to. But now I can sew regular the next two parts. So I will be doing these two like this and then I will do the right side because you know this will be taken up on the seam allowance so then I will do the right side. Those are just normal seams. After that we'll be doing this piece up here where we need the, this is the top section where we will need that flap again. I put the regular foot back on and now I have this section 
and I just will take the bottom and put it right sides together and just do a regular seam because you can see they are perfectly aligned. Oh, there we go. And I will just do a regular seam across here like you would always do. There we go. And now that one's done. Just right cutter. So we've got this guy. Now I'm going to press it because I really think pressing, particularly I'm on the tiniest block, I need pressing to be sure it's all nice and flat. Next is the right side of the block. Once again, we have no inset seam. This just goes on here normally. Nothing unusual. Put it down and sew a, sew a regular seam. There we go. All the way down to the end, cut the thread. Now we'll go back and I'm going to press this again because now we have two more seams to do. We have, we will be going across here and then we'll be folding it and doing that little end, finishing it up. So here we are. This top piece lines up with with this section here, but it lines up with that seam folded out. So I have to sort of fold open that seam and then put this guy on. What I will do is fold it this way and then pull the flap of the left one down. There. So you've got sort of this sandwich of it folded in on itself and then the flap folded down so that I can lay that guy on top and I will do that and sew across. Here it is pinned on the top. You can see the folded part. Remember it folded down. So that's just folded down out of the way. I put a little pin in there and I'll just do a seam straight across. So once again there's no inset seam. I'm just trying to clear so that I can get to this working area there. Okay. Now we'll sew this. And this is going to keep right on your fourth inch seam allowance. If you go too far, you're going to sew on the other project. So I'm going to hope I didn't do that since I'm demoing. That would be lovely. I'd have to undo it then. But let's see what happened. Did I get it? Ta-da! I did. There. See? Right at the edge. Let me take it out. Okay, get the other pin out. So now what I have is the block that just needs this part sewn. What do you think we do? We have to get them right sides together. So yep, just what you thought. You flip this big part to the left. Yeah, that it lines up. I will need to go give it a little press, get it nice and flat. And then basically I will be sewing this last final seam. I pressed it and I folded it over. Here, just pulled that out. I don't really need that in there. I pressed it. This is still not sewn. Now I take the right side and fold it over on the left side. I will line up the top so that they match. And then just sew to where I'm basically back at that starting point of where I was. Oh, let me get that. And I would just, whoop, I got something messed up. Hold on. The perils of sewing one-handed. There we go. Anybody thinks you can't sew one-handed? Yes, you can. I think I'd be pretty good at it with a little bit of practice. So now I get right back to that intersection where I was. I am going to take my machine just a stitch or two back. Okay, cut the thread, and voila, we have the block. And I'll do another press, but there it is. I get to do this two more times for the other ones. If you just take your time with an inset seam and don't 
sort of, you know, get yourself too worked up about it and just follow the directions on it, they are really not hard. You do have to sort of, you know, come and sort of get right next to that last seam so that it looks, you know, and acts seamless, but it's really very easy. It does, it works out so nicely. I learned to do patchwork by hand, like, you know, hand piecing. And when you're doing that, you have a little bit more control because of course you're just moving the needle yourself. You don't have the speed of the machine to uh, be a be part of the equation. And so I learned to do a lot of a sort of more difficult techniques by hand piecing. So I understand the mechanics of what uh, it needs to be done. So, the, so they don't really frighten me. I just don't do them that often. There aren't that many blocks designed that way. But for me, it was really fun to be able to do all three of those with the inset seam. Okay, let's take a look at the next blocks for this week, which um, I have a, a few more sort of tips on how I'm going to walk through getting those done. So we're gonna go to the other side of the table. This is one of the two blocks. I have the first one done. It's called the Southern Star and I just need to cut out the other two. One of the things is I was reading the directions for this and I kept thinking, I'm not reading this right because it's sounding like I need to cut too many, so I must not be reading it right. So I just took a break, came and looked at it later, and then, you know, that helps. So sometimes you have to do that when you're reading things, particularly if you're reading something that by maybe a designer that you aren't um, using their patterns that often, so you're not used to their style of writing, or you're just tired, or you, your brain is kind of are doing other things, give yourself a break and just check things later. The other one we'll be doing is the checkerboard. And so I've got, got to start on it, but when I, so it came to how to do the square in a square, which is what this kind of unit looks like. If you go by the pattern in the book, um, they have you cut, you know, sizes for the background fabric. But I'm thinking I would do all of mine with the papers. So if, I, okay, let me put this down. <clears throat> so if I do it with the papers, then that means I have to cut this fabric differently. And so that's something to think about. If you're look, reading a pattern and you want to use a different method to accomplish the shape, be sure that you, you know, don't cut the fabric yet. Check the other method because using the papers, I cut this background differently. I can cut this. Stop the presses. <laughs> so last night I went ahead to make one of the blocks from this checkerboard and I gave you the wrong information on these. You have to be on your A game when you're converting a pattern to use something else to be sure that you're actually accurate. What I decided to do was make one unit and I decided to try the, to do the middle unit and discover that I had the wrong papers, which is ultimately fine. You know, one thing is I have plenty of fabric, but let's just take a look. I don't actually, am not going to be out much fabric even. So I had you doing a bigger unit. You really need the, the two and a half inch, the two and the one and a half inch. And this was what I was making, but these guys, uh, this size that I made is actually the larger size. So I have all those over there uh, at the sewing machine now to make all the larger blocks. These I will cut down some to make the center, you know, the centers are the darker. So I just have to cut these down and these will be fine. They're a little oversized. But anyways, that is what you need if you're going to convert the pattern for this one to use the papers. And I've got this one trimmed. I accidentally, while I was trimming, cut the paper and I wanted to be sure the paper stayed on so I just put a piece of tape over it and this is trimmed to size which is the size that it tells you it should be trimmed to in the book pattern so now I'm good all good and I wanted to be sure that you had the right information uh, with this video since I hadn't loaded it up yet <laughs> there's always new things to learn I do have this fun fun mail call it's always exciting when you send me mail. I don't know, I just love mail. I think that's just the bottom line. So the first one comes from Wendy in Arizona. Look at this beautiful card. And this was a card that she got from Missouri Star and on the back it says there's the May Day basket, the vintage blossoms, the turnabout granny squares, and the tilted nine patch. So they list the name of all those quilts. Now what she did is she was looking through some of her magazines and found two magazines that had selvage quilt projects. So there's a tote bag, 
which is super cute. She thought I might enjoy that. And in this one, there are the pin cushions. So if you happen to have those magazines yourself, then you will be able to do those too. You could, you could get those. <laughs> Now this one's from Teresa in Arizona. Look at this absolutely stunning card. Look at this with the hummingbirds. Do you see them? <gasps> this card is gorgeous. The whole, the whole mail could just be this card. But she sent me some salvages. She added a few from her collection and some super cute teapots. Look at these. Look at them. Now teapots, teacups, tea, teacup, um, so these would be cute for a label. You know, you could you could uh, add white around it and that could be a really cute label. So thank you so much. Okay, what else do we have here? From Carol in Canada. No, the, yeah, the, we'll do this one. They're both, okay, Carol and Canada. I'm just so excited. Okay, Carol in Canada. There is some spools on this card, so cute. And she sent me a whole bunch of salvages. Got a nice big stack here. One was a Chevy. That's pretty cool. I like that. And then she found a book. It's by a Canadian author. It is called Red is Best. <laughs> she says her kid's favorite, favorite book. And it has things like, I like my red pajamas best. It's just so darling. I like red because red is best. This, the whole book is just so incredibly cute. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Talia in Indiana sent me this beautiful card. She has three children uh, at home. And so fitting in her cool thing, she told me, is something that's kind of, um, you know, she has to really work at it to get that in there and with all of the kids' activities and all the other things that she does as a mom with the littles at home. But she sent me also some salvages that are just, this one I think has little birds on it. Look at that so cute i like that stripe too look at the stripe also she sent me candies that are made in indiana that are she thinks better than gummy bears <laughs> so i will do a taste test for sure i have a pack of gummy bears one of you sent me from their celebrations and this one has a really great mango raspberry um pear black currant blood orange crimson cranberry fuji apple and queen pineapple flavors and she's she likes the textures of the the texture of them so i will definitely be trying them out thank you so much my friends oh my goodness Mwah. such great great mail call okay if you're doing midnight moon or you just are interested in how the process works i hope this helped you today or gave you a little insight a little motivation so i love you Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.